How would you evaluate yourself more positively or more negatively? According to the Department of Sociology at the University of Maryland, self-esteem is a positive or negative orientation toward oneself, an overall evaluation of one's worth or value. Self-esteem is only one component of the self-concept. Besides self-esteem, self-efficacy or mastery and self-identities are also important parts of the self-concept. The Rosenberg Self-Esteem Scale is one of the most widely used measures of self-esteem. It is a simple design composed of just 10 questions that are answered using Likert scale choices that range from strongly agree to strongly disagree. This video will present the Rosenberg Self-Esteem Scale to you, one question at a time. As each question appears, write down the question number and your answer. You can pause the video if needed. Here we go. Question number one, I feel that I am a person of worth, at least on an equal plane with others. Question number two, I feel that I have a number of good qualities. Question number three, all in all, I'm inclined to feel that I'm a failure. Question number four, I am able to do things as well as most people. Question number five, I feel I do not have much to be proud of. Question number six, I take a positive attitude toward myself. Question number seven, on the whole, I am satisfied with myself. Question number eight, I wish I could have more respect for myself. Question number nine, I certainly feel useless at times. Question number 10, at times, I think that I am no good at all. Now that you have your answers for each of the 10 questions, we can look back at your answers to calculate a score that represents your self-esteem. Some studies defer in the point value they attribute to each answer. For us, we will use a point scale of 0 to 3. Other studies may use a point scale of 1 to 4. A conversion can simply be applied to compare your score to either point value scale. If your score is based on the 0 to 3 point scale, but you want to compare it to results from the 1 to 4 point scale, simply add 10 points to your score. If your score is based on the 1 to 4 point scale, but you want to compare it to results from the 0 to 3 point scale, simply subtract 10 points from your score. For questions 1, 2, 4, 6, and 7, for any answers of strongly agree, give three points. For any answers of agree, give two points. For any answers of disagree, give one point. And for any answers of strongly disagree, give zero points. For questions three, five, eight, nine, and 10, for any answers of strongly agree, give zero points. For any answers of agree, give one point. For any answers of disagree, give two points. For any answers of strongly disagree, give three points. Now, total up all of your points by adding all of your points together. What is your final score? What does your score mean? Well, do understand two things. First, because researchers can vary in the number of points they use in their scale, make sure you first always take note of the point values a study uses before comparing scores. Second, this test is not meant to be used as a diagnostic measure. It is helpful for only providing information about your potential self-esteem. To help us understand how your score compares to scores of other people, 
Let's look at the results from a research study. A 2010 study collected data on individuals from across the United States, ranging in age from 18 to 87. This study used a 0 to 3 point scale, so you can compare your score directly to this data without performing the point conversion. Considering the data from all of the 503 participants, the average score was 22.62. Comparing females to males, females showed a slightly higher self-esteem score at 22.79 compared to males at 22.43. There were age differences related to self-esteem scores. The youngest group, ages 18 to 25, had the lowest average score at 19.67, while the oldest group, 66 and older, had the highest average score at 24.62. The relationship between age and self-esteem score was not a perfect positive correlation. In between the youngest and oldest participants, the relationship between age and self-esteem varied. For example, for 26 to 35 year olds, their average score was 22.28. For those between 36 and 45 years of age, the average score increased to 23.40. However, the next two age groups, 46 to 55 and 56 to 65, showed a decrease of 23.17 and 22.70 respectively. In addition to age, the researchers also analyzed the self-esteem scores in relationship to race ethnicity, education level, employment status, income level, and marital status. For race ethnicity, African Americans had the highest average self-esteem score at 24.32, followed up by the category of other, 23.82, whites, 22.63, and Hispanics Latinx, 20.26. For education, educational level was positively correlated with average self-esteem score, with more years of education linked to higher self-esteem. For example, participants with only a high school diploma had the lowest average score, 20.78, while those with education beyond a four-year degree had the highest average score, 24.26. For employment status, those currently employed scored higher, 23.35, than those currently unemployed, 17.68. Retired participants' average score was 23.17, while those classified as a homemaker had an average score of 21.84. Like for education, income level was positively correlated with self-esteem, those with higher incomes had higher self-esteem scores. For example, participants earning under $20,000 a year had the lowest average score, 20.06, while those earning over $100,000 a year had the highest score, 24.61. For marital status, married participants scored higher than those not married, with an average score of 23.76. Those who were divorced or separated scored just below married participants, 22.38, and single participants scored just below them, 20.77. Despite its limitations, this one study opens up the complicated factors that can be important influences on the trajectory of self-esteem development.